Yo, my peoples, what's up? Welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. Jason here, and today I have a preview playthrough for Stone Spine Architects, currently on crowdfunding. This one is for one to five players from Thunderworks Games, from the designer of Cartographers. Only instead of that spatial-based play that involved drawing, we're going to go back to the spatial stuff, but we are going to do so with drafting. So we have this giant pile of chamber cards, and slowly we are going to draft our rooms. Uh, we are going to build a 4x4 four four grid of a dangerous dungeon. And as we fill our dungeon with traps and monsters, we're going to score. So we have our global goals. We have our personal goals. We're going to get gold and improve our dungeon with the markets. Lots of things to do here in Stone Spine Architects. It has elements of Sprawlopolis, where you are building a, a network with your cards. It has that drafting element from a Sushi Go or Seven Wonders. But you're, then you're getting the patented role player a cornucopia of points that are going to shape your game experience. So let's get into some announcements, and then I will dive in to Stone Spine Architects. So let me go ahead and give a brief overview of game flow, and then I'll get into the rest of the rules as I play the first round uh, and beyond. So as I showed at the opener, there is a giant fat pile of chamber cards, and they are all going to have different qualities. So they're either going to be hewn from rough rock or shaped from stone. Uh, they're going to have different connectors, uh, and they're also going to have elements. So there's four uh, quadrants to each card. Uh, and they're going to have uh, gelatinous, <laughs> you can't say gelatinous cube, you have to say like ooze or something, uh, copyright stuff. Uh, we have traps, we have reputation, we have treasure, we have all sorts of different elements uh, that will play into the arrangement of your dungeon and ultimately the final score. At all player counts, you're going to start each individual round with five cards. You're going to draft one and pass, very familiar gameplay. Uh, so in the multiplayer game, it's very straightforward. You're just going to draft one and put it into one of your four chambers over here uh, and then pass the rest of the cards. In two player, there's a draw and a discard to kind of mix things up a little bit. And I'll get into the solo uh, as I get into the playthrough. Okay, so here is my decision space and there's a lot to think about. So I have this card right here, which is my blueprint. Uh, there are a bunch of sample blueprints, so everybody's going to be incentivized to build different kinds of dungeons. Here is mine. So uh, lots of different considerations. So do I want to prioritize building this kind of room? Uh, the more of these icons I get, the more I'm going to score. So let's say if I want this card right there, that I would put that and then I would pass the rest of the cards. Also, uh, if I wanted to hold off a little bit and see if I can get that filled in later, I can prioritize this treasure and then draft this card instead and have that uh, secured. The treasure gets me uh, one gold for use at the end of the round. Or another scoring condition is uh, having continuous rooms that are connected to the entrance and the exit. Here's the entrance and the exit will be placed at the end of the game. So. Uh, if I want to make sure that I had points connected to a contiguous row, then I would make sure that I, my draft would include something like that. I will eventually be able to buy upgrades that uh, give me some secret tunnel connections. But for the most part, I want to be able to uh, have lots of access, so lots of cards score off of a connection to the entrance. But wait, there's more. I might not want any of these cards because of the global goal. In this particular game, the global goal is number of gelatinous things. Uh, in the dungeon, there are different goals. That's modular, uh, number of traps, number of treasures, etc. So I might want to draft this card instead, uh, get that going, and make sure that I have progress towards the global goal. But wait, there's even more. There are personal goals that you can draft uh, at the end of the round. You'll get three of these in total throughout the game. This one says gain full reputation for each chamber with at least one monster, one trap, and one reputation icon in your dungeon. So let's say I wanted to draft this card instead. I got a trap and I, I got a reputation. Put that in there, and then at the end of the round, I might be able to buy a, a dungeon icon, which I would place into the card uh, right there, and that would get me four points per instance of that at the end of the game. 
And so as you can see, right from the start, uh, my initial hand of cards, I have so much to consider. So uh, do I go for my personal goal? Do I go for my uh, longest connection off of the entrance? Uh, do I go for the global goal or do I go for one of the personal goals? Uh, and which cards allow me to do as many things at once as possible? That is the heart of the decision space of Stone Spine Architects. And you thought that was all far from it, more to consider. So you are also going to tally up your gold that is on the bottom of these cards. The end of the rounds, in this particular case, I have seven gold to spend. Generally, the better the card is, the cheaper the uh, output there is. So you're going to want to have to balance. Do I want a kind of bare card uh, and have a lot of gold or go back and forth? So like this card would be uh, no roads at all, uh, but five gold. So you have to kind of measure all that as you're drafting. So here we are at the improvement phase. I have marked my seven gold. If this were a multiplayer game, there'd be multiple markers over here and we would buy in sequence. Uh, in the solo game, it's just me. I got my seven gold and I am consulting this uh, deck of solo cards. So the solo cards are going to measure uh, how much gold you have relative to uh, you. So obviously uh, jail, <laughs> this is a lockup, why they call jail anyway. Uh, they have more than me. They have 13. So they are going to discard uh, whatever that says. So I am no longer eligible to buy these upgrades, including the Secret Stairs, which is a rare and awesome upgrade. That stinks for me. Now I can buy. I can buy 4-7. I can buy these two icons, which will improve my dungeon, give me a little bit more scoring. And because that's 8, I can't afford anything else. I would spend all 7, put those in my dungeon somewhere immediately. In addition, I can always pass at any time and gain one of these uh, personal goals. So sometimes you're going to want to leave some gold on a table if you find that there's one of these that's really good for you or just spend and take whatever's left. Okay, so uh, the goals are going to be a uh, similar spatial stuff as I showed you before. Gain two reputation for each uh, reputation star in your dungeon. Uh, gain some stuff for traps, some stuff for monsters. There's going to be plenty of these. Uh, you are going to get one of them in every particular turn. At the start of the next round, you're going to draw back to your hand of five cards and do the drafting thing, depending on whether you're playing the multiplayer, the two player or the solo. Uh, as you draft cards, you will cover uh, each individual uh, previous gold count. So then I would have a whole new gold count at the end of round two. And you see how the dungeon will develop. I'll have a different uh, roads that I want to complete. I'll hopefully be able to buy my secret passages to complete those roads. There's going to be a mighty dungeon uh, that you have to consider at the end of the game. If you want to see that mighty dungeon and check out all of the scoring in action, then please stay tuned for this full solo playthrough. All right, so here is my opening layout for consideration. I kept the cube because I love the cube. <laughs> but I re-dealt a set of personal goals. We have the uh, cobalt plus trap combination. We have traps in a line from the exit. So uh, that's a little bit later. Don't know if I want that. Uh, and this one is gain two reputation for each slime in a single chamber. So uh, that means a contiguous chamber of one of the types of dungeons. So uh, if I want that one, then I want a lot of one of these types. And also uh, the jail card has a threshold of 13. So if I get above 13, then I'm going to be able to buy something before they strike. Uh, if I don't get the 13, then they are going to eliminate some things, including this very rare and precious uh, secret passage. So I might want to beat 13 if I want to buy that passage before the bot strikes. The other thing to note about the bot card is this rune symbol over here, the C rune, one of three. So then I drew my hand of five cards that I get to draft from. Uh, you see the runes over here. Uh, and this is the rune that is key to the solo bot for this turn. So what's going to happen is I'm going to draft the card and then I'm going to reserve a card. Uh, any card that has the rune goes to the bot and goes to their scoring conditions. So they can score based on the global goals uh, and some other things. Uh, but if I want to deny the bot, then I would either draft or reserve uh, that card. And so I'm going to draft this card right here. It's going to give me a decent amount of money. Put it there. That's going to fulfill this condition. I don't love the, um, the area over here, but at least I can kind of split off and get the dungeon connected that way. And it gives me one slime towards this personal goal. Uh, so that fulfills this condition. So now I have that type of room, uh, which is that symbol right there. So a little bit of progress. And I'm going to reserve this card 
for the next turn and then discard the rest of these three cards. None of those three cards had the key rune for the solo bot, so the solo bot gets nothing this turn. Let's go ahead and take the card that I reserved and get three more fresh cards from the stack. And now I'm going to have to give the solo bot something. Ugh. <laughs> I'm going to have to give it two things or one thing if I take one and reserve one. I saw this though. This is pretty much a no-brainer. Uh, so uh, I am going to put that there. Uh, hmm. So uh, I have the gelatinous cube over here. I have the entrance over here. Okay, let's do that. Let's do that. That gets me this. The global goal is gelatinous uh, cubes. I forgot which one is the bad one to say. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, and then I am going to bank. So if I wanted to, I could bank this card, which is three gold. That's really good. Um, but I can't really use goblins right now. Let's go ahead and forget that. Uh, I will bank this one, the cash uh, right there. And then this uh, gets uh, disposed of. That will get discarded. And this goes to the bot to begin their dungeon empire. So here are my three new cards. Lots more cubes. So can't really go hog wild with the cubes because uh, it's just majority of cubes, not like per cube. That would be sweet. Uh, anyway, and it also has that C rune. So I have two cards with the C rune. Looks like the bot's going to get one of them. Uh, well, I don't, it doesn't have to get one of them, but <laughs> lots to consider here. Uh, so I'm actually going to take that one right there. Decent amount of gold. Uh, gets me nine. Links this. Uh, for the one personal goal and gets me lots of gelatinous cubes uh, and I'm going to reserve one of these which is going to be hmm do I want to actually draft this one yeah I do want I might want it that be, might be a good one to uh, draft and then I'm going to have to give up this one which goes to the bot on the last turn I'm going to draw one card and I have my choice of two uh okay nothing <laughs> nothing i have going on interacts with that uh this does get me a cube oh well and they're both two i don't love either of these options although the best part is this does continue downward which would continue this row so all i have to do is get one secret passage up here and then i'm able to open up that whole thing uh, for the dungeon to connect that's cool this card gets discarded, and that is the end of the drafting round. I did not exceed jail, which is 13, so they are going to do their thing. First of all, they're going to remove these two tokens, because that's what it says over here. Boo! <laughs> Monster I don't care about, they got rid of the secret passage. Uh, there's very few of those, so the next time it shows up, I probably should prioritize getting that to open up my entrance. And it also says, uh, discard the lowest number challenge. And oh, did I forget? Uh, <laughs> this is the more solo stuff. They're going to get 15 points and uh, they are going to score two for every goblin they have. So right now they have two cards, no goblins, but they do get a point from the uh, room over there. That's not the worst thing. This part, though, is more hurtful. I was hopeful to get this, uh, but uh, I look at the numbers on these bottom cards. Go ahead and move this to the camera so I'll show you. 11, 20, and 26. The solo bot specifically says it's going to discard the lowest number challenge, which is this. No! <laughs> I really was hoping to get more uh, out of there, uh, and there are more valuable dungeon cards, but I didn't get them. So bye-bye, uh, uh, seeping threat. Was hoping to be able to draft you. Oh, well. So don't really have too many options, so let's go down from 11 to 3. Uh, buy this one for 8, and I get these two tokens to place in my dungeon. Has to be immediate. Can never go wrong with placing slimes against each other. Maybe they'll mate and make a third slime right there. That'd be a real trick for a cardboard, but uh, hope springs eternal. And we're going to place this trap here. Uh, the trap I like because I am going to draft this one, even though I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it because I don't have any idea where the edge is going to be. But more traps, the better. So right now I have two traps along this path. Let's go ahead and draft some more to make this one more valuable. Full round of Stone Spire Architects. Hopefully that covers most of the rules. Let's get into the rest of the playthrough. All right, round two, fresh market right here, fresh jail card, uh, fresh uh, personal goals. 
and I've been informed by Wizard of the Coast that I may no longer use the phrase gelatinous cube because that is under copyright. Apologize for infringing our copyright, Watsy. Uh, so instead, I'm going to go with gelatinous horror, or the game calls it an ooze. I refuse to call this cube thing an ooze. Anyway, <laughs> whatever. So I have my eye on this one. Uh, gain two reputation for each ooze in a single path of your dungeon. Got plenty of ooze on the path. And also, the bot is going to go for the lowest number challenge. And the lowest number challenge is this one. So not interested in that. So let's go ahead and get myself a little bit more focused. This is the new card. The threshold is 14, which is on the low end. And even 14 is difficult. Uh, the way to jack up your coins is to draft treasure. Uh, if you draft treasure or acquire it, then you'll get those uh, coins uh, continuously from round to round. So they are going to discard uh, this top one right there and that bottom one right there. Uh, and they are going to add additional scoring condition for their pile. Each set of ooze and slime is going to get them some more points. So much to think about. All right, so I've drafted my hand of five cards and as usual, tons to think about. So uh, looking at my hand, uh, I have an opportunity to draft a cube, get uh, the maximum amount of coins, and also deny the card, deny the bot a card because they're acquiring green this turn. So let's go ahead and put that one there, which will fulfill the condition right there. And that's a pretty easy link to make if I can manage it. Uh, so then I get to reserve a card, which is going to be... I kind of want to, I want to draft this one. This just like would fit really perfectly there uh, just to make sure. But that would give the bot two cards. Uh, and uh, you know what? I might just give, go ahead and give the bot two cards because this just looks perfect. And I want to make sure I get a suitable treasure for there. So then this card gets discarded and these two cards go to the bot. So draft three cards, three empty spots plus my reserve. Uh, these three cards, none of them have the green symbol, love the cubes, uh, but i uh, got to think a little bit more long-term with the game. So let's go ahead and put that one down. I get my first treasure. It's only worth one gold, which I'm not too happy about, but uh, I'm going to get that gold uh, this round and every other round. So uh, the next uh, two rounds, and it fulfills this condition, so did a lot there. I'll reserve this card for what should be obvious reasons. Draw two more cards uh, for the two open spots. Ooh, more treasure. I like it. Ooh, some traps. I'm not starting to... Oh, wow. <laughs> Literally a room called Trap Storage. I'm working on a victory condition, which has traps. Don't like the pathing, but uh, some good opportunities to get things going uh, in all three cards in their own ways. So from round to round, you can't build down. You have to build across. I think I can only make this card work like if I could put it here, but I cannot. These two would be dead ends. So let's just go ahead and get rid of that and instead uh, start to work on my trap storage. Uh, that is going to be pretty valuable if I can link that to the exit because of my personal goal and I'm going to reserve that card. Normally it would go to the bot, but nope, no such thing. Uh, and draw, draft one last card into my hand. Another trap. Uh, wow, three gold now, or two gold and some more gold later. Uh, traps are good, but this would not link up naturally. So let's go ahead and just discard that one, play that one, and hopefully I can get that going to the exit. Keeping in mind that I know where the exit's going to be, so it's going to be down here somewhere, so I have to make sure this path comes down uh, to the proper place. Not a ton of gold this turn, unfortunately, because of the trap storage. Hopefully, you pay off in points. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The bot laughs at my seven. It has 14. It is going to uh, get rid of this token and also get rid of this token. Did not miss you guys, so that's okay. And also discard the lowest number challenge. We already went over that. That's that one. Not going to miss you. I was really hoping for that. <laughs> really hoping for that. That is truly unfortunate. I was, wasn't able to get that. So let's go ahead and spend the four. Get that. Who knows? I might, this might come into scoring at some point. Uh, and then that is going to be the end of the turn. And I'm going to draft this card. At least that was redeemed by the fact that I got this card. And I have so many cubes on that one path. On to round three. New round, new market, new personal goals, new uh, bot card. The bot card is going to eat these uh, C symbols. 
and uh, that's a high number. So I'm gonna really try to get that because they're gonna eat the top row of stuff and there's my secret passage. I'm gonna only have one more round to be able to get that. So uh, I need to be able to beat 16 now. Doubtful, but I'm gonna try. And I have these new personal goals, uh, not really uh, things that I am too keen about. I might have an outside chance at this. This one I'm already working on. I have one of them, uh, the column of a solid uh, color, solid uh, each, what is that? The only one chamber type, I already got one of the possibility for two more. So maybe that one, maybe this one, which scores for the uh, Knoll, Goblin and Cobalt combo. We'll see. So here are my five cards. Unfortunately, they're all from Rough Hewn Stone. This is nice, that treasury. If I'm going for gold, that's gonna have to be the one. Uh, the rest of these are just not very uh, lucrative. I do have some uh, knolls, uh, tr or two traps. I'm going to reserve that one, and I'm going to play the treasure. Uh, forget that uh, <laughs> that one that has the uh, whatever. I want this one in the corner to be out of the way, but also linked up to the uh, main network. So that's going to get me three coins at the end of the turn. Uh, none of these have the C, so they're all going to get discarded the normal way. Let's go ahead and pick up three more cards, making four. Uh, this is the card that I reserved is the training room. We have intersection, that's nice, and three coins. <laughs> it's not four or five, which is what I needed, but uh, that's actually not bad. Uh, and corner room with a trap and a reputation. Mm. Ooh, see the game is really trying to corner me now, not giving me uh, obvious choices. So I'm gonna go with mobility. Uh, let's go with intersection. It does give me the maximum amount of coins that I can get. And I am going to reserve this one uh, to deny it from the bot, really. It's kind of a hate draft. And then discard these two and get two more cards. We have the uh, exercise yard with some kobolds and lots of reputation, but no pathing. Hmm. So let's go ahead and go with the corner room. Corner room gets me the most coins, a reputation, a uh, trap and a uh, hope and a prayer that I can link that. <laughs> uh, gonna get rid of the ruins uh, and reserve this. The bot eats that, but not if I reserve it. And this is a big card. Let's see what I get. Hopefully this is something good for that. So let's see, we have, okay, the warehouse on uh, the exercise yard. Okay, that's not the worst. <laughs> so that officially puts an end to my uh, room over here. Uh, and I have this link right there, which the exit is there. So all I need is a room that goes kind of up and down right there. And that would give me a lot of points for that. Uh, that's another trap along the way. So that's good too. Goblin is okay. Ugh. A lot of okay <laughs> is the basic point. Uh, but by doing so, I had to give the bot this exercise yard. Oh, well. So this is not impressive. So three uh, is six, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. That's not bad. Not enough for the bot to prevent it from doing its dastardly deeds, which is wiping out all that stuff on the top and discarding that one, which I wasn't even looking at anyway. So I may as well. So that just puts me down uh, just by the rest of this for eight, and then I will lose the rest. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and put that in my dungeon. The trap placement is important. It needs to be on a path to the exit, which is going to be down there. And that one is just going to get me more gold at the end. On to round four. So here's what I'm working with for the final round. I rearranged this just a little bit to show the three conditions that the bot is going to score on. And their pile of uh, acquired dungeon cards, which isn't too much. Uh, they're not going to score too much off of that. It's just kind of a threat to the player. It's mostly this and the other stuff they're doing. So that's nice and low, 12. And I got my stairs over here to try to open up that room, which is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six extra points if I can get that. So my goal is to beat 12, which actually at this point with all my treasure, I can do. I want to beat it by enough to where I could spend my four and finish with more gold with the bot anyway, which means my goal is around like 17. <laughs> Let's see if I can pull that off. I also have some personal goals. Let's 
Let's get some goblins in here. I got tons of treasure for every other goblin I acquire. I'm going to get three points. So that's the one I'm looking for. This is the one, the lowest number that the bot's going to discard. Knolls, don't care about you, Knolls. All right, so here are my five cards. Uh, and uh, happy to get a obvious choice, finally. <laughs> All right, so minus two reputation, not a good thing, but this card does so many other excellent things. Okay, so first of all, we are going to put this card here. Uh, so what that does is it gives me my exit. So I will be able to draw that, and that's going to that's gonna be all those cards that are connected uh, to the exit, because that's where this is. I get my trap, which is another victory condition. I get my condition on this one. So that's actually worth four points, four points. This card's worth eight, which is not too bad. And the bot is taking blue this turn. It's the only blue card that I was given. So I don't have to worry about giving the bot any cards. Just have to reserve one and move on. And seven coins are gonna be really helpful to exceed the bot and do what I gotta do. So lots of goodness happened there. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and res uh, reserve this one because that is the prized uh, Noel that I need. I kind of ignored it for this side, uh, but that's okay. Can't do everything. Everything else gets discarded. Let's draft up three or draw three more cards to go with my uh, reserve. Here we go. You saw how valuable goblins were uh, in that one card that is multiplying with treasure. So let's go ahead and do that. It links. It also fulfills this condition. So uh, if I draft a Knoll here, then I will have six of the eight, and that'll get me 10 points. So let's go ahead and reserve a Knoll. Uh, reserve that Knoll. The Jotnus Cubes don't really matter. I already have that majority. Uh, does it, this one does, uh, doesn't matter. Let's go ahead with the one with the more coins. Discard the rest. All right, here are my other cards. Uh, all another no-brainer. Love no-brainers. Let's put that here. More goblins, more links to the exit, uh, some a good amount of money, uh, and well, I have to. I'm gonna. Do I want to reserve this one? Oh, that's a lot of goblins. But if I put a uh, that over here, that would be uh, another four points. Uh, but I'm giving this card to the bot. If I, uh, sure. Uh, for the one point, don't know if the bot's going to get too much use out of that. So you can have that. And I'll just reserve that. And here is my last card. Uh, the Let's get some coins. Sure. Another link. Points. My game is done. So finally, I exceed the bot with 21 points. I did what I wanted to do. So I get to buy until I pass. So let's go ahead and buy this right now. You know where it's going. The entrance to create a cluster of six points. That brings me down to 17. I can still go. If I really wanted to, if I found use in it, I can buy one of these two. However, uh, that would put me behind the bot and I would be basically sw uh, giving three points to the bot. Uh, would I get three points from buying any of these? I don't think so. That is correct. Buying the trap would only get me two points. So, uh, and all these monsters don't really matter for the cards that I got. Uh, and that is the end of the game. And oh, by the way, uh, I'll note this in the rules. I don't get this. So uh, in, the, in the last round, you actually don't deal out challenge cards. Uh, I will note that. That is, uh, makes me very sad because that would have been a lot of points. That whole goblin rush at the end didn't matter. But uh, I'm going to keep that in the filming anyway because it illustrates how much there is to keep track of. And so just, you know, er, oh no, <laughs> uh, I did that wrong. So but be really mindful when you play this one. A lot going on. And so here is the final layout. I gotta admit, from a production standpoint, it looks really nice. This is all prototype components, but it's pretty uh, comparable to what you're gonna get at the end of the game, at least this part. And you could see it. You could see the adventurers going through, ow, 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 monster and trap and all that kind of thing. Uh, the uh, definitely kind of uh, see the cartographer's DNA because, you know, in cartographers, it kind of has that same sense, right? You're drawing uh, slowly across the uh, course of the game. And then at the end, something emerges. You can kind of like put it together with your mind. I think the, both of those games do a good job with that. I'm talking about all this because I lost. <laughs> Uh, so obviously this is a prototype. Um, so 86 to 79. I think uh, focusing on the goblins a little bit uh, cost me. Uh, and I'm 
generally not awesome at these games, kind of the, these point cornucopia games. But with the spatial element, with the theme and everything else going on, uh, you know, there's a lot uh, to offer here. If you were playing along and you found that this might be a little bit easy, you could play with advanced uh, bot cards, which will eat two sets of symbols per turn. So more cards going towards the bot, giving you that extra layer of challenge. I hope this overview and playthrough gives you the information that you need uh, to determine whether this is worth your backing dollars or not. Once again, it is on crowdfunding. The link will be in the show notes to this very video. This is Jace with the One Stop Co-op Shop, reminding you that we'll see you at the next stop.